seen years and thank you. Look, we, we are both individually who we are. Uh, certainly she has an influence on me and I have an influence on her. Certainly it has not always been easy. And if you, <laughs> if we really got down to it, you'd be surprised. Um, but because we don't wear it necessarily uh, when we serve, thank God for his grace and mercy that we're able to stand here in the grace that we do. So we don't take that for granted. It wasn't because, uh, just because of me and just because of her, I will tell you both of us have received the grace of God to be able to stand together. And it, it can be rocky. It can be rough. Amen. But we thank God for God allowing us the grace to go through those moments when we could have went different ways and decided to do different things. We thank God for the grace to be here today. All right. Amen. And y'all know I'm not making it up because she's smiling, all right? And clapping, see there? So if she looked strange and looked out of sort, y'all would know I'd be telling tales. But uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, and I love you. And uh, thank you for the two earthly uh, blessings you've given us, as well as the two er heavenly blessings you've given us. And we praise God. Praise God. I've learned to embrace the good as well as the bad. We have learned to embrace the good as well as the bad. And certainly we don't know what their names would have been, but we thank God. If you don't understand, we'll talk and tell you one day. Uh, but we thank God for LJ and Shay being our earthly blessings. Amen. Amen. And so, oh, yeah, we had come up with names and all of that. Uh, Langston was one. I forget what the other one was. Uh, but we just thank God. God, as we, as we were conversing and, and, and going over some of those moments over the weekend, uh, it, it, one thing that has been my personal resolve, and that is when the doctor said um, the first miscarriage, when I say to Emily Angel, this is what I'm speaking of, uh, when the first miscarriage happened in 2009, I thought that my life was snatched from me. And uh, I remember a lady making sure she stayed home that Sunday. And uh, she rested, but I had to preach through a rough period. And because of those moments, God has given me the grace to stand here 13 years and be able to testify of his grace and his mercy. Uh, but one thing the doctor said, um, he said, we don't know uh, what, what the cause was. And my wife, and you know, some of y'all saints were trying to see his high heel shoes and the doctor didn't say that. The doctor didn't say, now you should come down. That The doctor didn't say that. The doctor actually told us in the room and shared with us um, it said your body knows when it can't handle certain things, but because your body, the way the body is made and created, I don't know if he was a believer or not, but I just heard God speaking as if the body knew what we would not want to happen because the doctor said if it had went full term, uh, my wife, elect lady, uh, and all the baby would not be here today. So I took a resolve in that saying God knows what's best, even in this, even if it's our worst. So it's by the grace of God that we stand here, amen, uh, and, and, and 18 years, and I know there'll be more hills to climb and mountains, but today I'm glad she's smiling. Amen. I'm glad she's smiling. I'm glad I can still make her laugh. Uh, the corniest joke was when we first met. Uh, my word, we laugh at it now. I don't know what I was thinking, but whatever. Um, my, my, when I first talked to her, I didn't know what to say. So, uh, Elder Rules, I was very, uh, as the kids might say today, corny, uh, because my what I said is 
uh, can we uh, communicate sometime? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, that was not my best game that day, but I got the best prize. And I got the best prize, so uh, even I had to think after I said, I said, fool, why did you say that? Of all things, you're going to say that? Can, can we communicate sometimes? That's cool. All right. Uh, but here we are. And thank God, because I'll tell you a little bit more that I'm going into the world. She, um, the, the man of God that night gave her a word and, and spoke into her life. So thank God she was still under the power of the Holy Ghost. That she took the number and gave me hers. And we talked that evening, that night, because I thought I was older than her. So I said, Lord, if I call her tonight, her father going to answer this phone. I'm going to be in trouble. But I said, I'm going to take a risk. And we talked that night for a few hours, about three or four hours that night. And um, the rest is history and her story. His story and his, her story. So uh, we thank God. I found out that night she was older than me and all this other stuff. So um, we just thank God uh, for 18 years. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I'm going to hasten on because I have a job to do and I want to do it to the best of my ability and with the strength of God, I give honor to my parents, doctor and apostle person, God bless you. And as the old saints would say, uh, the whole household of faith, we thank God for you. God bless you. Amen. Genesis, uh, the first chapter, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. There was lighting. God saw that light, um, saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called light, so the evening and the morning were the first day. Uh, pay attention to the first two verses. This is sp specifically uh, where we want to point at, uh, and we have not been able to over the few days we've been dealing with this subject. Um, Genesis 32 and 22, and he rose that night, took his two wives and his female servants and his 11 sons and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. And then Jacob was left alone and wrestled, uh, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Uh, now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, but he said, lowercase h, he I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said, capital H, uh, him, uh, he said to him, um, uh, capital H, he rather, uh, he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. One more place. And we're moving Thank you, Jesus. Um, Matthew 16 and 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say uh, unto, I also say that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell or Hades shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should not tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Uh, the word of the Lord is blessed. I want to use for a subject which is continuing uh, here talking about identity crisis. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say identity crisis. As we have shared over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks, we've been sharing about the identity crisis. Uh, upon looking over my notes, upon looking over what was said, I understood uh, that we had not properly uh, uh, made you aware what, and maybe have taken for granted, what an identity crisis is. So we look at the origin of this term or phrase uh, identity crisis, and it comes from the person who is a developmental psychologist, Eric Erickson. And he, in his uh, writing, uh, in his beliefs, he believed that the formation of identity is one of the most important parts of a person's life. In fact, he, divi he defined eight crisis stages that characterizes our lives from birth to death. So what is an identity crisis? It is a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person's sense of identity becomes insecure, typically due to a change in their aims and roles in society. So it really brings us to a place is who are you and what is your identity? We find out that through the word of God that Joseph, uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, Jacob has come to a place where he has separated and left everybody, his wives, his children, his servants, and everything he had on one side of the brook, one side, and then he was left alone, and then he began to toil with the man. Uh, as previously stated, and certainly we will state again for the sake of uh, this conversation and this lesson, is that we must, we must learn who we are. Uh, we must understand who we are, what God has called us to, what is our purpose. So therefore, a lot of people are going through identity crisis because they have not yet discovered who they are. Uh -huh. All right. Hallelujah. They have not discovered who they are. They don't want to know who they are. And therefore, they go through life just aimlessly shooting and doing stuff and never coming to a place of completion and doing what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I look at now at our lives. We see that our children are going through identity crisis. We see that there are many children once you go through the adolescence age and it is a time that most of us have gone through something or did something uh, and, and we've gone through enough to determine what our identity is. So therefore identity is something that shifts and grows throughout life as people, as we as people confront new challenges and tackle different experiences. This is why it's very important that we do not run from challenges and run from experience because challenges proves to us that we who are, we are who we say we are. And if you don't find out who you are, you'll find out that you got some coming up to do. Uh, when you go through something, challenges cause us to look at our lives to say, I'm really not where I am supposed to be. In fact, Without a test of trial, you would never find out who you really are. Mm. You, you really find out who and what a person is made of when you go through stuff. You'll find out uh, what your identity is. And if you if you don't even know your identity, you know what you ought to do. And it begins to shape your identity. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to know that there are various ones of us going through identity crisis. And I must state this is at times. 
times I wonder is the church going through an identity crisis we don't know what we want to be who we want to be we don't know whether we want to be male or female we don't know y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me we got women out of here dating women going with women lying with women we got men going with men nowadays that is an identity crisis if we hold on to the word of God the word of God will give us the precise uh, uh, understanding of who we are and the clarity we need to see ourselves by mm -hmm. it is in the word of God that we are to measure ourselves it's in the word of God we are to see whether we're lining up with what God wants us to be or are we going with what's the norm Hallelujah. Some folk are good at going with the norm of going to be average. But I want to let you know that God made you more than average. God put in you a, a, a thought and an idea to go after stuff that you ordinarily wouldn't go after. God gave you the ability to find out who you are. Hallelujah. Once you find out who you are, you usually can identify who you are right uh, what do you mean preacher i'm telling you if we find out who uh, our father is we can start to understand how we supposed to act in some of our ways uh, 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 begin to line up when you want to know who your daddy is hallelujah uh marvin povich does it like this if you want to know who your father is let's do a dna testing mm-hmm and sometimes hallelujah the way we're acting it doesn't seem like who our father is God wants us to be holy and righteous so therefore we must be holy and righteous hallelujah but there are times we have allowed things to come and bring uncertainty and confusion into who we are we got the church don't mind being the church on Sunday huh? but when it comes to Sunday night Monday huh? Monday night Tuesday Tuesday night huh? all the way through Saturday and Saturday night huh? we want to live another life huh? but how many are willing to yield huh? their vessels their bodies their minds huh? their thoughts to the will of God huh? hallelujah Bible tells us huh? that we ought to present our bodies huh? as a living sacrifice huh? holy and acceptable unto God huh? which is our reasonable service huh? hallelujah look at your neighbor huh? and say neighbor have you presented yourself to God Huh. When was the last time huh, you said, God, I'm yours, Lord? Huh? Everything I am, and the songwriter said, and everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Huh? Try me and see. Huh? See if I can be completely yours. Huh? Oh, let me help you and correct you as well. Huh? You don't have to ask God to try you. Huh? You'll just say, Lord, I'm yours. Huh? Help me to be more like you. Huh? Help me to talk like you. Huh? Help me to speak like you. Huh? Help me to think like you. Huh? Because if I am the body of Christ huh? and I'm one of the members, huh? I must be like the one huh? that's the head of the body. Huh? Look at your name and say, neighbor, huh? we got to be the body of Christ. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Understand while developing huh? a sense of identity huh? is important it is most important uh, seemingly upon the teenage years uh, and it seems like it's when you are a teenager uh, that things begin to happen that didn't happen before uh, oh some of us can recollect and quite sure uh, our young people that are here listening today uh, can tell you and I can tell them uh, that things that happen to you in your teenage years uh, begin to shape how you look at things. Uh, this is why it's very important uh, that we just don't have an experience uh, uh, but we get the knowledge of God uh, that God can show us uh, who he is uh, who he is uh, and how we are to uh, 
uh, conduct ourselves. Uh, can I tell you this? Uh, when you have an identity crisis, uh, oh, identity crisis causes us uh, uh, to retreat if we're not careful uh, because of those that are challenging us. Uh, they are challenging us to be right, to be saved, uh, to be righteous. Uh, I remember long before I met my wife, uh, I was on the dating scene. I was sitting in church. I didn't know any better then. Hallelujah. My parents didn't say nothing. And I'm quite sure they didn't say nothing because they didn't see it. Because I knew where to do my stuff. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Some of you know you've done your stuff when your parents weren't around. You cussed the most when your parents weren't around. You did this and that when your parents wasn't around. But let a note go home from that teacher. Let that parent get an update on what's going on in the classroom. Uh, uh, but getting back to this and getting back to me uh, I will tell you I will sit in church had my little girlfriend at the convention uh, and sit in the convention in the back of the church I knew how to be a part of the church when the music was going on but when the music stopped I made myself uh, kindly sat in the back of the church with my arm around my girlfriend feeling proud Y'all ain't going to help me here. Huh? You hear my mother? She didn't know. Hallelujah. Huh? Because I knew what to do, when to do it. Huh? I don't know. It wasn't consciously. I didn't go there trying to hide from them. Huh? But I know what I was doing. And they didn't always. It's just coming a revelation to me now, actually. Huh? That they didn't always see what I was doing. Huh? Hallelujah. The truth be told, I knew how to cuss. Huh? And I knew how to cuss when I left around from my parents. Y'all ain't going to help me here. Why? Because on Friday nights, there used to be a show on HBO called Deaf Comedy Jam. And Deaf Comedy Jam was not the cleanest of languages. And I was feeding my um, feeding my inner man uh, things that were ungodly. So that's why I could cuss and not think about it. Y'all not going to, all right, y'all saved. I understand, y'all never cuss. Uh, hallelujah, y'all never cuss. You never wink the eye. You never did nothing. I know you've been saved all your life. I know you've been sanctified all your life. You've been speaking in tongues since you came out your mother's womb. I understand all that. Uh, but I'm talking about some real places. Uh, uh, when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to be, who I wanted to be, even after getting saved. I gave my heart to God spoke in tongues but nobody really knows the period in which I went to school and would listen to black sheep and would listen to black sheep, black sheep, black sheep I know y'all don't know but some of the y'all under ones y'all know who black sheep is and you know the music and you know the derogatory nature of his conversation and his mel mel uh, 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 lyrics and melody engine engine number Number nine on the New York transit line. Get it up. Get it. Oh, y'all. Right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all too saved. Y'all too saved. Oh, but you do remember turn out the lights. You do. That's why you got your little creations now. Because somebody turned out the lights. I'm here to help somebody today. Because I was in a period of confusion. I wanted to be saved, but I wanted to fit in. And in order to fit in, I would do what they did. Say what they said. Listen to what they was listening to. Huh? But then there was a day of conviction huh? that I could not cuss uh, and speak in tongues. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Uh, I could not cuss, uh, cuss and speak in tongue. Uh, and if I cuss really hard, hallelujah, uh, it'd be a while before praise come out of my mouth. Uh, but I'm here to let you know, uh, because of those hours and those days and those weeks, uh, sometimes months uh, of feeling God's presence, uh, I was like David. Don't take your spirit away from me. Uh, Lord, forgive me, creating me a clean heart uh, renew a right spirit within me uh, lord i just want you to purge me with his uh, uh, i just want to know does the church have their identity today uh, are we drinking and driving uh, are we trying to be intoxicated uh, by the earthen vessel
muscles uh, that hold something strong? Uh, uh, have you ever in part of, uh, have you, I'm sorry, have you ever experienced uh, the intoxication of the Holy Ghost? Uh, because when the Holy Ghost comes, uh, there are some places uh, your feet ought to feel conviction going. Uh, there are some places uh, hallelujah I know I know uh, uh, there have been times where I may even have been guilty and I asked the Lord for forgiveness uh, and I even said I wonder have I blurred the lines of my preaching uh, because I don't want you to have blurred lines uh, hallelujah uh, that's for Robin Thicke to have to, for you uh, I don't want to give you blurred lines uh, I want you to have clarity of sight uh, God wants you to see this thing uh, and Whatever he calls holy, that's what we're going to call holy. Oh, my God. You say it ain't nothing with a little bump and grind. But you keep on bumping on the wrong person. You keep on grinding on the wrong person. And something's going to happen. Your flesh ain't going to be able to handle the intoxication of the hotness of the moment. But you're going to need the Holy Ghost that'll keep you. Oh. Uh, that'll keep you uh, when you want to do uh, uh, Paul uh, said it this way uh, when I would do good uh, evil was present uh, the saints uh, old saints said always present uh, but here let me clarify for you Paul said uh, when I would do good uh, evil was present uh, uh, your childish uh, immature nature uh, kept you thinking uh, that the devil was always lurking. Everything ain't the devil. You can't blame the devil for everything. There are some things you got yourself into. There are some things you cause to happen. When will we take responsibility for our own actions? We binding the devil on every turn. Everything ain't the devil. We talking about God's gonna do it. Let God do it. When will you take responsibility for your actions? and reactions because some of us need to repent right now and ask God for forgiveness because we reacted instead of responding oh yes hallelujah hallelujah understanding it's in the teenage years when we really start to feel our way out it's in the teenage years that we realize that there's a drive that we have emotionally or sexually there's a drive hallelujah I'm talking to somebody I'm warning somebody hey my god but can I tell you this when we look at at Matthew, uh, we find out Jesus said, uh, he asked them, he said, who uh, do they say that I am? Uh, who do they say I am? Uh, some said Elijah. Uh, some said you're the prophet. Uh, some said you're John the Baptist. Uh, uh, but Jesus said, uh, uh, then he asked them, uh, but who do you say that I am? Uh, Y'all better stop acting like uh, people say opinions don't matter. I don't care what nobody think. You do care what people think. Jesus cared about what folk think. You ought to care about what folk think about you. You ought to care about how people view you. Oh, 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 you're trying to put yourself in a self-righteous place I, I, I don't need nobody to tell me nothing I, I know what I'm doing I, I don't care what nobody think I, I'm sorry to warn you but you're headed down a path that you're going to have multiple accidents some front oh my god some accidents going to happen but you got to get ready hallelujah to change your perspective huh? change your mind huh? and when you can submit yourself to the yielding of the spirit huh? to the working of the spirit huh? then you won't have to worry about huh? making a name for yourself because huh? once you get concerned huh? about making God's name great huh? God will make your name great huh? oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all help me out. I need to switch this mic. Glory be to God. Look at your name and say, neighbor, I must be concerned about what people think. And most of all, I must be concerned about what God thinks of me. Hallelujah. What is God's opinion? What is God's thought? What does God say? Is God pleased? Is God happy? Hallelujah. Well, Peter told Jesus when he responded, when Jesus asked the question, but who do you say I am? Jesus said, you're the one we've been waiting on. You're the one we've been praying on. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Jesus told him, blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. There's some things and revelation. God said, it's not going to come by man or woman. But this revelation is coming ha, through Jesus Christ. Ha. Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, ha, when you have ha, a fresh revelation ha, of who Jesus is, ha, you'll have a fresh praise. If you've never been forgiven, or you, then Jesus went about it this way. He talked to them one day. He said, There were two men. They owed a lot of money. There was one that owed a little bit of money. There was another one that owed a lot of money. And Jesus asked them, Who do you think appreciated the forgiveness, the resolving of the debt? the most ha. Jesus told them ha. Oh, or somebody responded and said ha. the one who was uh, that had the most debt ha. oh God ha. in other words that doesn't speak to me on the amount of sin ha. it speaks to me on the amount or the amount of debt ha. and we know Jesus was doing that ha. to make an analogy between ha. debt ha. being resolved ha. hallelujah Hallelujah, or exonerated from a sentence and that God is going to the one that had the most debt would be the most appreciative some of us are not appreciative because we feel like we ain't done nothing if you ain't got no praise it's simply because you have a self-righteous spirit you have a spirit that believes I ain't done nothing wrong this week but when you stand and sit in a posture daily walk in a posture saying I need God I may have messed up I don't even know where I messed up at but Lord I'm going to ask you to forgive me Lord I repent now bring it to my foreknowledge bring it to my forefront so I can understand and change my ways oh, the one that has been forgiven the most will be the one that really got most of the praise and I wonder sometimes if people really thought that God was good self explanatory too I will talk earlier it makes me wonder has the Lord done anything I know he has it's a rhetorical question I know he has but I want to know do you realize what he has done huh? have you recognized how many messes God has got you out of huh? have you acknowledged huh, the mess you could have been huh? how you was born a mess huh? how you lived a mess huh? how you walked a mess huh? hallelujah forgetting who you really was hallelujah forgetting that God really saved you hallelujah truth be told it wasn't in June 26 1990 that God saved me can I tell you he yet saving me he yet saving me he yet oh, yo, 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 yo. he yet saving me 
tell your neighbor and say he yet saving me I know you don't want to confess it the devil don't want you to say it but say it out your mouth and say he's yet saving me I, I gave my heart to God I, I marked the date June 26 1990 I, but there are many start overs I said Lord I, create in me I, a clean heart create in me I, create in me I, create in me I, I ain't looking at my brother or my sister I, if they ain't got a praise that's on them but Lord created me and then I created praise God created me a clean heart then my hands gonna lift up in adoration to him cause I'm thinking that I'm the king's kid but some of us I'm hastening on I got to hurry up oh ho so I got the hasten up I got the hasten on but can I tell you this hallelujah we have another character we must bring into place right now and mostly we don't know his name but most identify him as the prodigal son most talk to him and I bring this up because he had his blessing he got one day and said daddy I need you to give me my inheritance now I need you to bless me now and the father gave it to him only to make a mess of it go out there with right is living, sleeping wherever, at the job, to clean the hog pen, but yet him being, we believe he was a Jew, oh, why should the Jew be in the hog pen? The significance to that is, it was defiling for any Jew by nature, by nationality to pick up the swine, because the swine would defile them, that was one of the animals that they could not eat. So you mean they picked up pork? He cleaning out the pork pen? Yes, with all the slop. Mm -hmm. He in that place. That was his job. But he came to his senses one day. He said, if I don't even be a son, even the servants in my father's house, God, even they got somewhere to stay. They eating better than I am. Hallelujah. So I'm just go back and be a servant. Hallelujah. He went to be a servant on his way to see his father. While he was yet afar off, his father got happy. His father got happy and said, My son is actually alive. My son is alive. I thought he was dead. I thought he was no good and nothing. But here, my son coming back to me. He's coming back and he said daddy won't you let me just be a servant he said enough of that in my words enough of that rubbish I'm here to let you know I'm going to make you a son again you never in fact you never lost your position you just had an identity crisis Y'all ain't going to help me here. It's an identity crisis that will cause us to do things we know ain't godly. It's an identity crisis that will go on. And, and, and we call ourselves, call ourselves uh, being, 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 being uh, uh, balanced. But can I tell you something? Uh, uh, that was another lie that the devil told the church uh, is we need balance uh, hallelujah uh, if there's balance there means uh, there's a scale there's a scale uh, there is something heavy on one side and you have to equal it out on the other side uh huh. And so, therefore, to have balance, you have to have one that equals the other side in order for the scale not to tip over. And some of us have allowed the devil to trick us into believing balance is when we ain't that holy and when we can talk about earthly things and 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 yet speaking tongues like nothing ain't never happened. No, sir, no, ma'am. I'm here to let you know that we got to disband that thought of having balance because what God, we need more of God than our flesh. 
Oh, 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 oh. So we equaling how much God huh, and how much flesh we have, and there's the equal. Huh? Then how does God get more glory? Huh? How does God reign in our lives? How is He judge huh, when we have placed Him and righteousness on a scale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have been told huh, we can let our heads down huh, because we need balance. Huh. No, what you need is to know everybody needs a vacation. Huh. You ain't going to be in the church 24 7. We understand that. Huh. But the balance that the devil's trying to fool you in huh, to let you believe huh, you don't need as much God as you need. Huh. But I'm here to let you know and remind you huh, we need God like never before. Huh. And if anything, huh, we could, if we, it was possible, we need more of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we need more of him. So we don't need balance. We need the weight of his glory. We don't need no balance because it's made us lukewarm. God said, I wish you were hot or cold. I wish. Y'all ain't going to help me here. Lord, huh? thank you, Holy Ghost. Huh? You know, some of us huh, has allowed the enemy huh, to make us lukewarm. Huh? Oh, my God, huh? lukewarm. Huh? He told the church in Revelation. Huh? He said, hey, "If you are lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth." Huh? In other words, huh? either you're gonna be saved or unsaved. Huh? Either you're gonna be holy or unholy. Huh? We have had so many messages huh, that make us feel comfortable in our sin. Huh? We've had, God said I had enough of it. God said I had enough of these messages huh, where we speaking huh, and preaching to make you feel comfortable huh, just so you could come out of sin. Huh. But I'm reminded, huh, no, we're gonna hold the word of God huh, uh, ain't gonna make you feel comfortable. Huh. Hallelujah! Huh. Uh, in your sin, it will drive you to get out of sin. Huh. The Lord huh, loves you. Huh. Oh, He'll love the hell out of you. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. God want us to realize. God want us to come to a place of dependency that we need Him in order to know who we are, in order to know what we're called to. We need Him. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, somebody say identity crisis uh, I'm almost done I got a hazel on aim. my time is up uh, but I want you to know uh, that we cannot allow ourselves to be fooled by Satan uh, I understand what some people meant by balance uh, because they wanted to express you can't be in church 24-7 uh, 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 but let me tell you this uh, the church ought to be in you God ought to be in you more uh, than the church is you are the church, but God ought to be in you that wherever you go, you can live safe. Wherever you go, you can be righteous. Wherever you go, hallelujah, that's convictions that fall on you and in your heart. When God is pulling for you, God is rooting for you, and He wants you to know, I got you covered. But you're going to have to understand, you're going to have to yield your spirit. There has to be a yielding. 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 There has to be a submission to God. There has to be a yielding to God. It has to be a submission to him. And uh, Sunday is good. Sunday going to church and you come in more. That's great. I want you to continue. Uh, but it's going to have to be more than what you come to church and do. Uh, it might start there, but it shouldn't end there. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus said, oh, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, uh, but my Father who is in heaven, I know he's shown it to you. And then he said, I say unto you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. He was not talking about building the church on Peter. He was talking about the 
word that Peter just gave uh, that he is the Christ uh, if Christ is the foundation and the cornerstone uh, in fact he was the cornerstone that was rejected uh, so understand if he was the cornerstone that had been rejected by men uh, he is saying uh, if you know who I am uh, you, you got it all uh, you got what you need uh, if you know who I am uh, oh, look at your name I must close out uh, look at your name and say name do you know who Jesus is? Oh, Jesus is, I hear the old song say, he is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. Jesus, he's the one that is. Oh, he is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. Oh, yes. He said, I will build my church on this certainly Peter's name ha, means ha, Petros ha, hallelujah ha, which means rock ha, but he said ha, if you get to learn who the rock is ha, oh, the rock that is in you ha, is going to come alive ha. God put something in you ha, to recognize who he is ha. God put something in you ha, to make you search for him ha, and long for him ha. if anybody know in here ha, that God wants you ha, to know your identity ha, and God wants you ha, to come out of the identity crisis ha. look at your name and say neighbor ha, God ha, is what you need ha. God is not just what you need ha, but he's who you need ha. because if you're going to know ha, who you are ha, you got to know who you are ha. once you begin to know ha, that God created you. He created you for worship. He created you to worship. So that means I must know who I am. I am a worshiper. If I don't know what God called me to do for nothing else, take off the word pastor. Take off the title overseer. If I never do anything else, I know I'm being called uh, to give him praise uh, for the father seek one uh, that will worship him uh, in spirit and in truth uh, look at your name and say name uh, you've been called uh, to be a worshiper uh, you've been anointed by God uh, to be a worshiper uh, worship uh, is who I am uh, worship uh, is who I am if people don't like your praise then they have lost their identity I don't know that God loves praise for the Bible says he inhabits the praises of Israel can you tell me today that God loves praise I want to tell you yes he said through David Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise when you know who you are. You won't be afraid to stand up and worship when nobody else will worship. You won't mind praising God when nobody else praise Him. I did not say that you would feel good. Every time you praise him but I'm going to tell you this the Bible tells us Nehemiah says it, that the joy of the Lord is my strength there is strength in your praise my voice may go but I'm still bless the Lord David said I will bless the Lord at all times his praises shall continually be in my mouth then David made sure that he was a praiser look at your neighbor and say neighbor are you a praiser or are you a watcher 
Ha. I'm not talking about watch as well as pray. Ha. Are you just looking? Ha. Or are you participating? Ha. But never mind them. Ha. You keep your praise. Ha. You keep your praise. Ha. If you're stingy with your praise, ha. I know you're stingy with your love. Ha. If you're stingy with your love, ha. I know you'll never sacrifice. Ha. Ha. Ha, look at your neighbor ha, and say, neighbor, ha, God ha, wants you ha, to know your identity. Ha, I am ha, the redeemed of God. Ha, you ought to know ha, that no angel ha, can do it like you. Ha, no angel ha, can praise God ha, like you can because you've been redeemed. Ha, the hand of the enemy if you've been redeemed live your voice and shout yes well I'm looking back at the prodigal son once he realized what his daddy had he said I'm going back home to be a servant if you had the mind to be a servant God said I'll make you a son of mine I'll make you a daughter of mine but guess what the prodigal son is the only one with the identity crisis his older brother was getting mad when the brother returned and the father said go get the best calf bring him my robe give him a ring put some sandals on his feet well the brother got upset saying daddy you never gave a meal to me and I've been here all along then the father said what you talking about I blessed you when I blessed my son and everything I have is yours some of us get mad when the sinner man come here get saved have a drive and go forth but we like the older brother don't understand we've been here all along and God is gonna bless you all I have is yours once you realize who your daddy is God said I'll deliver you from your daddy issues if you realize God is the ultimate father I know you don't have your earthly father but God said I'll step where he is your daddy should have stepped in I'll handle your situation know me as your daddy lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you for being my daddy thank you you might have not never you knew a daddy but look at your neighbor and say neighbor you might not know your daddy but your real daddy got you covered your real daddy loves you your real daddy will receive you your real daddy will love you your real daddy will never leave you your real daddy tap your neighbor as a neighbor no matter who your natural daddy is God is the best daddy I'm not talking about daddy grace I'm not talking about daddy McCullough I'm talking about Jesus who is the father of all fathers he's the Lord of lords he's the king of kings you ain't got to suffer in your identity crisis you ain't got to wonder what I'm gonna be am I gonna be like my daddy if you know your daddy's daddy your daddy's daddy your daddy's daddy's daddy you know we all got the same father his name is Jesus 
Jesus. He'll be everything. He'll be everything. I'm done. I got to go. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He tells Peter, he said, upon this truth that you just spoke, this is what we're going to build the church on, that I'm the Christ. You can't build it on Peter because Peter still has some insecurities. Jesus tells him in this chapter, he said, blessed are you. But by the end of the chapter, he told him, Satan, get behind me. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. You, Jesus, you just blessed Simon. And now by the end of the chapter, you're going to call him the devil? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. You, you're going to deny me three times. You're going to deny me two times. You're going to deny me. And when you deny me, I'm going to still love you. you know, that's, why, that's why that song by Brother Dion Kipping says, I'm so glad that God's not like man. If God was like some of us, woo, some of us be damned to heaven or damned to hell. Y'all ain't going to help me here. Hallelujah. Because of what the beliefs are. Oh, but thank God, God is not like man. I, I may need to revisit that even phrase. Thank God, God is not a man. I, 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 you'll understand why I say it later. I, I say, I, the Lord just gave me that clarity. He was like man. <laughs> he was tempted in all points, yet guilty of none. So God was like man. He was 100%. Man and 100% God. I won't, I won't have to go through that again. Uh, that was a Christian empowerment book. God is, you understand what I'm saying? Thank God we, God isn't reduced to man's thoughts. But his thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. But when we come into oneness with him, our thoughts will become like God. Our ways will become like his ways. He want us to think like him. Don't let the devil fool you believing. Oh, you trying to think like them saints. Well, what am I? What are you called to be? You called to be a hellion? No, no, no. God ain't calling you to raise hell. He calls you to fight against hell. Y'all, y'all, y'all. What, what are we supposed, we're supposed to dumb it down what God gave us to make you feel comfortable? No. No. God, I'm so glad God is not like none of us. He was like a man. He was a man. 100% man. And 100% God. God talks to Simon Peter. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you buy on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. Don't you know God has given you the power to loose and bind up? First of all, he gave you the power in your mouth. Then he, David, David on the psalm writer said, teach my hands the war. 
teach my hands to war. Teach me how to fight with my hands. Teach my hands to war. How do the saints teach? Uh, how does the saints be taught? Uh, through their hands. Uh, you use your hands for praise. You lift your hands. It causes the enemy to retreat. It causes you to get strength if he stays there. Oh, you don't have to die and wallow in what the devil has presented to you. You can get there and say, Lord, I lift my hands to you. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. We, 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 God is already reaching down to us. We're reaching up to him. Jesus steps in and said, I'll make the connection. Genesis 1 and 1 come in that the earth was without form, it was void. And so, as we look at life and we look at our walk with God, sometimes it feels like our identity is void. Sometimes it feels as if we have no form. But I challenge you stand. I challenge you to reveal yourself to God. If you avail yourself to God, yield to him. Yield to God. He will give you your identity. He will give you your identity. But in order for you to understand your identity, you must get to know the one who gave you and is giving you the identity. Jesus wants you to know you are like him. You're just going to have to work through it. Sometimes you're going to have to work around it. But you're like him. And the enemy wants you to believe that you can never attain being like Jesus. That's why sometimes I look at some of the songs of yesteryear. Some songs we might not sing no more because it might not be our type of worship, but the songs have depth and meaning that brought an awareness. Uh, just to be like Jesus, just to be like him. So meek and lowly, so humble and holy, how I long to be like him. Oh, those songs will remind us that we are, our aim is to be like Jesus. If you're trying to be like somebody and they're not of God, help us. How many times have we tried to fit in? And see, that's what, one thing about the house of God. We weren't born to fit in with the world we were born to stand out and we must stand out as I kept meditating this week and preparing for today and kept thinking and kept praying and I said is the church suffering or our identity crisis have we gotten to a place that we're trying to be like everything else have we changed our ways so we can draw others in? How about you change, the people change their ways and still didn't draw no more in than before the change? But if you be like Jesus, the song says, if I be lifted up. Now, he, we understand that he's been lifted up on Calvary, and now he's doing the drawing. If we keep 
lifting him up. I'm not saying far as in the crucifixion, but far as praise, somebody will be drawn to him. Let your life be the life that somebody can see Jesus. When we sit in a church and then we try to sing, sit in the most un, most com, let me say like the, the most common places, we stick out even more. I never tried to go to the club because I always knew I would stick out. Yeah, after you got saved, yeah. Because I wouldn't fit in. No, because my feet would get convicted. But have we lost the conviction? That our feet are going into places that we shouldn't? Are we convicted when we're by ourselves and nobody's around us? Are we convicted anymore? Identity crisis. If you know who you are, you can't do everything. Can't do everything. And some liberties, you still can't get involved with those liberties. Because some of those liberties are going to have you bound right back up. Lift your hands and just begin to worship God. I know that I know this is a message that calls us to do an evaluation here. But we need this examination before we take this table, before we take this sacrifice, the sacraments of the church. We need to do self-examination and say, Lord, wherever I've fallen short, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Lift your praise up high, saints. Lift your praise up. And while you're praising him, talk to him. Tell him, Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need to, to fix this. I need you to fix this area. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the Lord. Come on, talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Be my- 